Stamp duty is a tax on property and land purchases, which for investors can be as high as 8% for purchases over £250,000. And because it is such a commonly known tax and a commonly paid tax, many people think that you have to pay it. But this isn't true. And I'm going to share with you four ways you can reduce your stamp duty or avoid paying it at all. And this could save you thousands of pounds on your next purchase. The first way, is buying a property which is going through probate. A probate property is one that's being sold by the executors of a deceased person's estate. There is of course some conditions that you need to meet in order to get the exemption from stamp duty so I'm just going to run through those now. Firstly the deceased person must have lived in that property as their main residence for the last two years. Secondly you must be a property investor. Thirdly the land must be less less than 10,000 square meters, which for most residential properties in the UK, that will be the case. And lastly, and I would say probably most trickily, you have to spend between 10 and 20,000 pounds on the refurbishment. So that's a minimum of 10,000 pounds and a maximum of 20,000 pounds. Now, of course, this condition is actually going to be the one that's hardest to meet because most probate properties, in my experience, are quite dilapidated and dated and old. And actually, spending that little money, particularly in today's kind of market with construction costs going up 24% since COVID, that one is going to be tricky. But if you manage to pull this off, you can be exempt from paying stamp duty. And what I would also say about probate properties is they actually are the properties with the biggest margins and that are often present the best opportunities because they're often kind of neglected and quite dilapidated and need of some love and attention, they do actually present really great opportunities. If you manage to get a stamp duty exemption on a great deal anyway, then that is a day to cherish. The next factor is where a property is deemed uninhabitable by HMRC. Now, this tends to be properties that don't have basic functions, such as a bathroom, kitchen, key amenities, such as running water or heating. But it could also be there's other conditions with the property that it's in a poor state of repair. So it might have really excessive kind of black mold and therefore is a health and safety issue. It could be not watertight and have severe leaks or it might have structural problems. But just to be clear, this doesn't mean that it just needs something kind of cosmetic or it's an aesthetic problem, just needs a bit of TLC. It is something significant significantly wrong with the property. So I've got a list of kind of examples here that might make a property uninhabitable under HMRC's rules. So we've got presence of asbestos, severe roof leaks, missing or unsafe electrics, no running water, damp or mould that could cause health risks, structural issues such as subsidence, doesn't meet building regulations, or the presence of lead in water pipes or within the paint. So these are going to be the properties that are very dilapidated, the ones in newspaper articles which are severe really in need of a makeover that in some people may even say it's better to pull them down. The ones where you've got trees growing inside them or black mold everywhere. They're those kind of properties that we're kind of talking about here, which are fairly kind of commonplace. And they tend to be the kind of properties that you will see um, at auction because they're not able to be sold on the open market because they don't tend to be mortgageable because of the factors that I've already mentioned. So what you would need to do here in in order to get the verification that the property is uninhabitable, you need to gather as much evidence as possible to then put in your claim. So you'll need to get builders quotes, you'll need to compile photos and video evidence, ideally get a survey on the property, and all of this will add weight to your application and provide some significant evidence that the property is in fact not habitable. What I would say here as well is that in my experience, because we had it recently with one of our purchases, is that solicitor isn't going to be able to help you with this claim. So it's actually something you're going to have to 
to do retrospectively if your property does potentially meet the criteria. So you're gonna to have to pay the stamp duty at the point of purchase, and then you're gonna to have to retrospectively claim it back, compiling all of your evidence that you've gathered, and then putting the claim into HMRC after purchase and essentially get a rebate. And the good news here is you actually got four years to claim any rebates for stamp duty. So you do have some time and it's not something that needs to be done immediately after purchase. The third way you can save on stamp duty is a great little trick and that is all to do with whether the property is owned currently by a limited company. Now, if the property is owned by a limited company, you can essentially buy shares in that company, assume control of that limited company and then not have to pay stamp duty. This is because you buy the shares and then you become the main owner of that company and therefore own and control the assets which that company owns. And because you are buying the company rather than the property itself, there isn't any stamp duty to pay because there isn't technically any transfer of that property from one owner to the other. There is just a transfer of the ownership of the company that owns the property. And this can be a huge saving, particularly on kind of bigger deals. So for example, on a 700K purchase, which is gonna be in the South, a kind of four, probably three or four bed house is gonna be kind of standard price, you're gonna potentially save 43,000 pounds here if you bought the limited company. But just to say where this doesn't work is where the limited company that owns the property that you're looking at if they own more than one property, it's unlikely you're gonna be able to do that because essentially you would have to buy a number of properties from them rather than just one. So if you're just looking at one property, they own more than that, they have a portfolio, it's not gonna work for you. So what you need to do when purchasing a property is that you need to ask the question whether it is in fact owned by a limited company and then you need to do some more inquiring and you can potentially do your own due diligence on that limited company, go on company's house, see what other charges they have registered on company's house and charges means that they have other property in their ownership and there is a security charge on that. So you can kind of do some due diligence yourself. Also ask the question to the agent or directly to the vendor to ascertain whether they do have more than one property in their ownership. And if it's all good, if they only own the property that you're looking at, then you can speak to your solicitor about buying the company rather than buying the property itself. And of course, your legal fees may increase because there is obviously more paperwork to do. However, it's gonna be significantly cheaper than paying the stamp duty and as I said, particularly on bigger purchases. If you're enjoying this video today, I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe and like the video. All your support means so much, so thanks in advance. So the fourth way you can save on stamp duty is where you're buying a property which is mixed use. Now, what do I mean by mixed use? Well, this is where you have a mixture of commercial and residential under one property. So examples of this are shops which have flats above or apartment blocks with an office in it or even a property with some kind of workshop or garage on its premises. So these are examples of the mixed use but just to be clear it needs to be a mix of residential and commercial it can't just be a commercial property or it can't just be a residential property to be get this exemption so a condition here that needs to be met is that the commercial aspect the non-residential aspect does need to be a substantial portion of the premises and the land so it can't just be a converted garden shed or a tiny office in a utility room it does need to be something a bit more significant and the examples that I mentioned earlier where you've got office blocks or gyms even, shops, those kind of things where you've got significant kind of square footage being taken up by a commercial property. So if your property does tick those boxes, there's two different types of exemptions that you could be liable for here. So the first one is mixed use relief and the second one is multiple dwellings relief. So the way that these reliefs work is that they are attributed to the poor 
proportional percentage of the property makeup. So for example, if you've got 60% residential and 40% commercial, then the mixed use relief, for example, will be just on the 40% commercial. So the stamp duty relief will be on that 40% of the purchase price. And the multiple dwellings relief is actually applied to properties where there is multiple units within one purchase. So whether you're buying a block of apartments or whether you're buying a number of houses within a portfolio all in one transaction. And that actually provides a significant stamp duty relief. In fact, you could get a 50% reduction in your stamp duty on properties such as these. So this mixed use and multiple dwellings relief, all to do with commercial properties, is a little bit more complicated and it's probably best to speak to a kind of tax expert on this. But of course, if you do manage to apply for it and, and meet all the conditions, it is gonna be a significant saving. So that's the four ways where you can reduce or even be completely exempt from paying stamp duty. It goes without saying that one of the biggest benefits here that I'm talking about is the amount of money that you could save on a property deal. Now, if you think about it, if you're saving leaving the stamp duty, which as I said, could be 8% of the purchase price. And on those bigger deals, you know, 700K deal, as I mentioned earlier, that's a 43K saving. That could make or break a deal. That could put you into significant profit if you manage to get a relief on that stamp duty or not pay it at all. That could really make or break a deal. And it could be kind of life-changing sums of money. So it is important to identify those savings at an early stage and obviously have the knowledge of where to be able to apply them. Given the complexities and some of the conditions that you have to meet, it is likely that you will have to pay the stamp duty at the time of purchase and then get a rebate after. And that is because often your solicitor is just not knowledgeable enough to be able to know whether stamp duty applies because they are legally obliged to charge you stamp duty correctly. So therefore, they are very much likely to be risk averse and apply it even if there is some question marks about whether it should be paid and then it becomes up to you to get that rebate after. And where we have done this successfully before, we actually saved £11,000 stamp duty off a number of properties. We've actually used a specialist um, stamp duty tax rebate firm and they've supported us with the application and liaised with HMRC to get those rebates paid back successfully. So so it's definitely worth thinking about using one of those companies because particularly on those larger deals where you're going to save tens of thousands of pounds, it's kind of worth paying their percentages in order to make that saving. And all in all, I think this is another great example of where knowledge and knowing the right people is so important in property and can save you money, increase your returns and increase your profits. So good luck getting those tax rebates. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. If you could do me a huge favor, if you could subscribe to our channel and if you could put any comments in the chat box, we would love to hear what you think of the video, whether you've got any questions, whether you've successfully got a rebate for stamp duty and we'll get back to you and reply to every message. It all helps to show how much you value this channel and yeah, thanks in advance.